What is up, YouTube? This is Hank Saber giving you guys a Fluffle OTK deck profile. Ah, uh, yes, it feels good to be back, guys. Um, been in college for uh, finals, blah, blah, blah. I'm back uh, just in time for the Christmas season and uh, just happy to bring you guys a Fluffle deck profile. That's all I can say. Um, we go. I was stressed out, but now. I am playing with toys again. So here we go. Um, this is an OTK deck. So I mean, just bear with me. We're playing not towards the grind game and more towards like first turn OTK. So keep in mind that we're not playing a whole lot of recursion in this deck. We're just playing um, draw power and a lot of dumping resources onto the board and just like throw up o OTK boards. It's like it's like crazy. But um, I think you guys will like it. So um, we're gonna start off with three copies of three. Fuffle Mouse. Um, so fu three Fuffle Mouse is essential for the deck, and the way the deck plays, um, you want to be playing towards bigger fusions, and you want to be playing towards bigger fusions because of the fact that this is what the deck does. It, it gains advantage off of fusing with multiple materials and a lot of materials and the more materials that you use the more will help you as the game state goes on and so if you get out mouse not only will it help you with a poly play but it will also help you out with a future fight for a fusion play and so and and as well your tire will get more pops your wolf will get more attacks and your saber tooth will become invincible and so um normal summoning mouse or even special summoning off of toy vendor is very good and so we play three fluffle mouse for that um and there are some other things with fluffle mouse which we'll get into in a little bit so uh three copies of him and then we play three copies of the satellite denim of the deck uh three copies of fluffle dog and so three copies of fluffle dog is very essential for the deck because what the deck does is it sets up its bear wings play its combo and what it does is if you have bear or if you have any combo of this bear and wings um two of those three you can send bear to search out the tour the toy vendor set the toy vendor active activate the toy vendor discard from toy vendor reveal a card from deck um discard also ha you have to discard wings you don't have to but for the combo that you you do have to uh you discard wings and then you reveal a card if it's a fluffle great you can splash them in any monster from your hand if it's not then you discard it then you banish any fluffle monster from your deck uh, from your sorry from your graveyard uh presumably the fluffle wings that you, the fluffle bear rather that you already discarded with the fluffle wings banish them draw a card destroy toy vendor draw another card and then search of toy vendor when it's destroyed so um bear uh dog sets up your fluffle um bear wings play and talking about bear and wings we play three of both um so i don't think that playing two of either is makes any sense at all because of the fact that you want to be playing towards your OTK and you want to have this hand as many times as possible. Well now Hank Saber, you don't want to have more than two of either of these because of the fact that the, th uh, the third copy of both are dead and that's true because very rarely do you get three searches of bear when it's once per turn and same thing with wings. But at the same time, you play this card called Toy Vendor, and Toy Vendor is a very bad card if you don't have the appropriate things to discard. And so while I understand that you can't activate wings multiple times, discarding wings multiple times is not bad because you can activate it another turn or just use it for fright for fusion fodder in the graveyard so um it's extra names i'd rather play this than an owl because owl is a normal summon and you only get one normal summon in the turn that you otk and so um and i'd rather it be dog that can search out anything and so um wings is a um, very essential card to play a three, same thing with bear, so um, we play those, um, and then I play one sheep, so the sheep is very simple, um, especially if you control a fluffle, presumably a fluffle dog, uh, bounce it back, um, special summon to edge in from your hand or graveyard, which sets up a wall, and that is very important because if you can't OTK the turn that you originally set up, then you want to have a wall of sheep and an edge imp in defense position, pass turn, and hopefully you, you won't be able to be OTK'd by your opponent. Um, 
and then uh, OTK them the next turn, which is which is very good. I usually only this is searchable off toy vendor. I usually only get it off of toy vendor after I pop it off of a wings play. And so um, playing multiples of this, while I understand it's very good in the grind game, I don't play this deck to be a grind game deck. It's just not a, that kind of deck. So um, I'm going to play the one sheet because I designed my deck to be a two to four turn type of deck and I don't want to play multiple sheeps in that time span. So um, and plus it's searchable. So again, um, I only play the one sheep. I don't play any other owls or rats or raccoons or whatever the names are. Um, I just play um, these and I think they're just enough for the deck. So um, I play these for um, our earth component for our fluffles and so for the dark edge imps we play um, we play the engine of tour guide and, and edge imp sabers so I think this is far better than playing three sabers in my opinion because of the fact that tour guide offers you something that the deck lacks which is a good normal summon and although, although dog and mouse is are both good uh, this is a one turn Dante, and it turns Dante a, a, basically a card that mills three and could possibly set off toy vendors, um, mill things like wings, which is why another reason why we play three wings. Um, and then, you know, you can mill things like sabers, another sabers, or a chain. Dante becomes a very good card, and so Torah Guard of the Underworld is a um, is a card that's very good. Um, also, if, if you draw, if you go first and you draw this, again, it's just it's very good. Having a Dante in defense and not being OTK'd is very good. So um, yeah, so I mean the reasoning for this is the same. I mean. What I what I'll be profiling next for you guys is despots, and so um, Dante in this deck does essentially the same thing what Gear Gigan X does in the despot deck, which is um, keep on going with the resources. You know, keep keep everything going and flowing up until the point where you can OTK. And so um, I think that these three help. Yard. Then activate Toy Vendor effect, discard a card, reveal on top of your deck, and if it's the Fuffle that you stacked, which it should be, you can special summon it onto the field. So um, this can help out with Toy Vendor plays, which is quite good. And so um, there are those. Um, plus also if you draw like multiple mice, um, you know, Fuffle Mouse, like you draw like multiples of mouse, and uh, you can stack a copy of it into the deck, and then you can normal summon mouse, and then special summon two from the deck. So um, that's very also that's also very important. And then uh, two copies of chain. Um, I don't think that three is necessary. I know it's a very good card, but um, I'm not playing any kind of rank fours. So um, I'm playing Norden. I'm not playing anything like that. And I think that your Fright for Fusion, you only pretty much you can only activate it once per turn. And I only want one or two copies in my hand to start with. So the search thing is not huge. It can be important if you don't have any fusions at all, but um, I usually do, so um, I mean three copies would be, I just think, way too much. So uh, there's two of those. Uh, three copies of King of the Swamp, and this card is probably the best card in the deck. Uh, King of the Swamp can basically substitute for any edge imp that were, that's uh, stated on a fusion, um, fusion card, fusion monster, and so also you can discard to search poly, which is great. So, um, three, I think King of the Swamp, like, it's, it's so good. You can also banish it off of Fry for Fusion as a material, which is quite good. Um, so it's almost like, it's almost like a shred in, in a sense, I guess. So, um, three copies of Toy Vendor, um, self-explanatory, if you mill it off Dante or something like that, like, you get effects and, like, it's just so broke. It's so busted. And so, um, yeah. Three Toy Vendor. Um, then I play three guys of Fright for Fusion. It's a, uh, it's, you know, it's basically a, a um, Miracle Fusion, and you can banish from your field graveyard. While you, use, while you lose those resources permanently, it's still a very good card because you can, um, it, I mean, it basically allows you to make Tiger and, uh, Tiger and Wolf in the same turn, which is your OTK play. So, um, yeah, those are our, those are our, our um, edge imp chain targets. And so, let me play three copies of Polly. Uh, Polly at three is very essential. You have basically um, 
three poly, you have basically a six poly, you know, with the three King of Swamps, so um, I'm not too worried about not seeing this card. So there's those. Um, triple up start, this is an OTK deck that can potentially deal 12,000, so I mean, having the few extra thousand for your opponent's not that bad, so we play three of this. Uh, three game, accompanied by the one copy of Fusion Gate, so like searching chicken game off of the two copies of terraforming that we play are you know it's actually kind of good because of the fact that we can get through our deck really quick and then top like put a fusion gate on top and then just keep on fusing which um i actually make chimera with this like quite often um it takes quite a lot a bit of resources but if you need chimera as an out to something which is also a very good card by the way um it could, it could be very good. The only bad thing about this is it banishes. And so, it like just like Fright for Fusion, like you don't get the resources back. So that kind of sucks. But in a deck that needs a Fusion card to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I'd rather have this and not have it. And plus it's searchable with Terraforming. And it's good to put on top of a chicken game. So that's why I play it. And then the one copy of One for One to special out mice and wings and things like that. And so... That's our main deck, and it's very aggro, it's very push, 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 but that's the way the deck is meant to be played, so we play that. Um, I'll play two copies of Fright for Tiger. Uh, Fright for Tiger, for any amount of materials that you use for its summon, you can pop that amount of cards on the field. So I usually pop Chicken Game if I have, like, um, if, I, if I need to OTK. Uh, I'll pop my own Chicken Game along with some other cards on my opponent's side of the field. I usually go for back row. Um, if they, if my opponent doesn't have too many cards to pop, then I'll pop my own Toy Vendor and get a search and try to play a, somewhat of a grind game to set up for the next turn. Um, but three, in my opinion, is not even needed. Like you can't, you can only control one of this at the same time, and so I don't think three Tiger is needed. But it's a very good card nonetheless. And so, along with that, we play two copies of Saber Tooth. Um, I very rarely even get off two in the same duel. I would probably not play. Um, too, but I mean, depending on what kind of support we get, this card could, could potentially be very good. Um, they were doing this very just, it, it's, it is busted when you get it out. You can special summon back your, your tiger and get all sorts of attack boosts. They get over 3,000, get over your, um, your opponent's Dark Destroyer. It's very, quite powerful. So we play that. Um, let me play the one copy of Fry for Leo. It is basically a number 61 Volcosaurus. Uh, one copy of Wolf. If you OTK, you're only going to make one Wolf. And if you, they stop your OTK, then you lose anyway. So there's no sense of playing more than one copy of Wolf. So, um, yeah. Then you're going to play one copy of Bear. Uh, you pretty much never need Bear, but it's an option. You can summon it because you have King of the Swamp in your deck, even though you don't have... Um, even though, like... Uh, instead of like having a Fuffle Bear or a Gym Saber, like, it's not as situational. Um, and then two copies of uh, Fry for Sheep uh, for your one copy for uh, your one target with Chain. Um, that's why I only play two Sheep, so I don't I didn't think three Chain was good. So um, I I do play two Sheep because they can't respond to the attack, and if it if it is destroyed by any means, it can be special back with 800 more attack. And it's very good. So I play two copies of that. And then the one copy of uh, Fright for Chimera. Again, I get this off. If I have mouse on the f uh, three three mice on the field and I have Fusion Gate, I can I can um, poly one of the uh, the one of the mice into a uh, fusion. Then I can fry for fusion to another second fusion. Um, and then bring um, then I can bring back one of the other fusions off of Sabretooth and then I have Fusion Gate. I, fusion Gate's not one per turn, so I can use it multiple times and so I can fusion another fusion and then I can fuse all three together, banish all three, special summon Chimera, which has come up before. So, um, I mean, it's a thing. I've done it like once and so um, there's that. So, I mean, not playing Chimera is not completely worth it like Ochoa, just play one copy. And then I play for the Xyz. I did play one number 154, uh, Lionheart. Now, it is true that you cannot summon this the turn that you summon Mouse and activate its effect. However, what, I ha what happens a lot is that I, I put the one copy of Mouse in attack because I normal summoned it, and that's why I didn't summon two in defense. Usually, like, the one attack position only gets destroyed, and then I have, like, a Wings in hand, so I normal summon the Wings and overlay for Lionheart. And card's actually kind of busted. Like, if you if you attack into a... Um, a, a a Dark Destroyer, right? So um, any damage that you would take from battle, it can't be destroyed and it, by battle. And if you were to take battle damage from a battle, your opponent also takes the same battle damage. And then once per, um, once per turn, you can detach, and then your opponent would take any damage that you would have took. So you can attack into a Dark Destroyer, and your opponent would take 5,800. So, um, I mean, it's quite busted. 
And then play Dante, uh, Alucard, Nightmare Shark, and um, number 30 Asset Gold Instruction for your um, tour guide plays. So, anyway, guys, um, that's the way I play Fright Furs. Um, right now, it's not something that I would fancy myself playing maybe competitively. Although the deck that it can play competitive. I would say that it probably needs some other key cards to play competitively. Um, there's some honorable mentions in this deck, like Dark Fusion and other things. Like Dark Fusion, with the thing with that is like it makes it makes your fusions not targetable by card effects. And we're not really in a, in a back row format. And the only thing that really targets this format is Dark Destroyer and Castell. And I don't know if I would even like if I would even play Dark Fusion, considering it's not. Surgible, and I don't know, there are some other drawbacks from that card, but um, I mean, the three copies of Fright for Fusion, the three Poly, the three King of the Swamp to search for the Poly, the one Fusion Gate, and the two Terraforming to search for the Fusion Gate, I thought was quite strong. And then I play so many copies of Fluff, like so many Fluffle names, I play enough um, Edge of Names along, accompanied by the three uh, King of the Swamps, to the point where I feel like this deck is completely somewhat uh, competitive. The only thing I have with this deck is that it doesn't have a grind game, and if I were to play cards like Instant Fusion, it would mess up its engine because of the fact that it would lose a lot of consistency, not being able to draw as many cards, and not being drawn into your combo pieces as much. So, um, I don't know how I feel about the deck. I would still, um, I would still like play test a lot with this deck before I give you a final answer on whether I'm going to come up with another build for this, but um, we'll certainly see. So anyway, guys, uh, for now, this is Hank Saber giving you guys my my Fuffle slash Fryfer OTK deck, and uh, it's quite fun. I, I advise, you, advise you to build this on DevPro, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, or, or any sort of dueling network site you can possibly play this on. Um, real life is also always an option. But uh, anyway, guys, just try this, play this, have fun with it. Deck costs like 20 bucks. Pick it up, it's fun. Um, if you guys are looking to play something fun for the format. Um, also looking to play Creature Swap. Different cards like that might be an option, but for now I'm, I'm sticking with this. And so uh, it's really consistent and a lot of fun. So anyway guys, this is Hank Saber. Gonna be coming you guys with Death Spots next. That's gonna be a very, very special deck profile that I've done very well with uh, multiple tournaments with. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But for now, this is Hank Saber signing off. Peace guys, peace.